Hello everyone and welcome to Unsportsmanlike Conduct. I'm Christian Stoinev and joining me today is Simon Arrestoff, who's a Green Bay Packer fan and also a Toronto Raptors fan. So we will be talking about the Green Bay Packers and the whole Aaron Rodgers situation and also about how this season has gone for the Toronto Raptors who are unfortunately for us missing the playoffs for the first time in seven seasons and there might be a guest appearance by the one and only the superstar the mooch so without further ado let's talk to simon all right and now i'm welcoming in my friend fellow performer and fellow enemy on the football field when it comes to packer fandom simon arrestoff simon how are you my friend i'm doing fantastic christian how are you Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm ready to talk about Aaron Rodgers. But first, I just want to talk yes. about my favorite thing about you. And it has nothing. Well, it does have something to do with you, but it's the Mooch. I want to talk about the Mooch. I want to ask okay. you a question. So the Mooch, fellow performer, he's growing into a, quite a superstar. He's going to be outshining you, uh, I'm sure, pretty soon and uh, taking I over think, your I think he already has. He outshines you, but I'm saying, you know, it's kind of like this is what happened with me and Percy. Once people see the dog, they don't want to see me anymore. <laughs> so I was gonna, ask, I was gonna ask you if you face the same reality yet, and uh, how is it just being a dad, honestly, and seeing your kid kind of take over the spotlight? Uh, I love being a dad. It's amazing. Mooch is the thing about him. He's he's got such a big personality. He's awesome. He's yeah. He dances for everybody, and he's like super nice to everybody. And everybody, like as soon as he was born, we were no longer like Simon and Lyric. Lyric is my wife. Mm -hmm. We were Mooch's parents. Yep. And so I don't mind it. I don't mind. Like you know, he's in the spotlight, and he's cute. I love it. So he is. Uh, I, he is Mr. Feel Your Girl for sure. Um, yes. He's already tried and shot his shot with Sonia several times, and. I've been lucky to hide, be able to hide your stay wife, away. Hide your kid. <laughs> yeah, hide your kid, hide your wife. Yeah, so I've been able to keep him um, distant from Sonia for now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's awesome, man. When we hung out with you guys, he's dancing over there. He's full of energy. So uh, it's it's great to see him perform. And do you think at this point he's already like, I'm sure he did a, probably more than a year ago, but does he realize it yet? Is he out there like, yes, I'm about to get all this attention right now? Yeah, he does. He loves it. He's been, uh, cause sometimes we do the rollerball act and the rollerball is I have a six foot pedestal and I put mm. cylinders on top of each other. I do uh, tricks and stuff. And then Mooch comes out in the end and I do a trick with him. But sometimes for halftime shows, you do a cube act where I spin a big cube. We perform with lyric and he's not part of the act yet. So when we're doing that act, he gets upset because he sees us <laughs> like getting dressed and he's like, Oh, where's my costume? And I'm like, Oh no, Mooch like, it's just us doing it. He, he started crying one day. We were in a, they were working for the magic here. He was like super upset. Like he wasn't going out there to, to do stuff. So we're well, trying to get him into that act as well. Uh, what What's going to happen the day he goes like, dad, don't you get it? They want to see me. Uh, I think that day has already happened. Oh, really? So he's already. <laughs> That's already. He knows that they're there to see you. Because dude, the reaction, like you get a good reaction. But when the baby comes out, it's over. You yeah. know yourself. You can't follow in the, in the circus or in, yeah. in show business. You don't follow animal acts and you don't follow children because like once they see the animals or the children, yeah, you can do the best tricks in the world. Nobody cares. Yeah, that's why Nobody I said cares what you do. That's why I said it's very similar, actually. Not this is the first time I'm actually thinking about this, but the structure of our acts, because we do our stuff before we reveal Mooch and yeah. Percy. Because <laughs> if we started the other way around, we would get booed on probably or be like, What? Why are you doing tricks? Yeah, imagine you bring uh, Percy out, you do a yeah. couple tricks, and then you send Percy away. Nobody, <laughs> nobody cares. Nobody cares, yeah. So, all right, well, I'm glad to see that. I had to ask you that because I think it's super yeah. awesome. He'll make, he's, out, he's outside running. He's going to make a cameo here in a minute. I'm sure. He's probably just waiting to enter the room. He, he's probably by the door. I could just totally imagine him, like, planning no, this out. And... I, just, I just text Lyric. I said, bring the mooch. Bring the mooch. He's on the toilet, so he's taking a... Uh -uh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's potty break he'll be here in a potty break he'll be here in a minute second. yeah yeah well all right then we'll we'll ask him maybe a question when he gets over here so um obviously we've been friends longer before the mooch even and one thing we got out of the way from the beginning was that we like opposite teams in the nfl i'm a vikings fan you're a packers fan uh yeah. for the past 
what let's just say 10 years you've been able to have the last laugh on pretty much everything uh oh, on christian christian i'm uh, so sorry We've interruption mooch interruption please have a seat show them show them why they love you mooch do your dance ready hey hey <laughs> I love it. What about the Gangnam Style one? Mooch, custom jersey. Ready? Let's see the little Gangnam games. Style one. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll have you to ask one more question before he heads out. I'll tell Sonia to skip till after minute five of this episode. Um, Which is Sonia's going to want to blow a kiss? Ah, uh, so cute. Mooch, how are you? Good. Good. All right. Uh, who's your favorite <laughs> football team? Do you know? Green Bay Packers. Green Bay Packers. All right. Speak a little louder so we can hear you. Green Bay Packers. Yeah. Nice. Go Pack. Go. How, go how, Pack. Go. God. Go Pack. Go. This is hurting me. How old are you now, <laughs> Mooch? Three. Three. Three years old. Nice. Uh, are you excited to get back to performing? And uh, last question, have you been practicing your autographs yet? Do you know how to write your name out? So when all the fans reach out- this mild manner. Do not let them fool you, you little liar. Why are you being so, so are you doing your autographs good? You're signing yeah. for all the teams you got to work for? Mm -hmm. And what do you do with the basketball show? What do you do? You do the dance, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, can you tell Christian thank you? We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Thank you for your valuable. Bye. Bye. Okay. Oh, so cute. Thank you for your valuable time. The payment will be in your Venmo. Thank you. Yes. Cash app as well, whatever is more convenient. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, he Bye. asked. He asked for a deposit ahead of time, so it's okay. it's already in there. But sorry, you were talking about the Vikings and your consistent and long misery of being a family yes. team. Yes. So for once as a Viking fan, I get to ask you what it's like to have some stress in your life and not, I'm not talking about stress as in we're in the championship game. Uh, yeah. you know, I'm stressed out about Tom Brady, actual stress that what happens if Aaron Rodgers leaves, what's your take? How are you feeling as a Packer fan? Honestly, zero stress because I don't think he's going anywhere. Number one. Right. Because this, this wasn't like a story that like some breaking news happened. Like, as you see, Adam Schefter just you put it out there the day of the draft with, with nothing really. Yeah, what? What was that? Up. <laughs> well, you know, because the draft, and I think it was like he put it out there. It was on purpose. It, it wasn't yeah, like an accident. Yeah. It goes months and months off, and all of a sudden, no. He knew the story get more trash because what did the Packers do? They trade him for draft picks. You know, what happens? I don't think anything really changed. I, I think what's going to happen is because of the there's so much attention in now. Packers, I think, are forced to give him whatever he wants now. Yep. Because, like, you know, if they don't, then they look at it as, like, the evil people that, you know, potentially like, screwed away, like, three, four years of potential title shots to Jordan Love's not ready. So I think they're going to – I think they're going to ship Jordan out next couple of years or just have him as a backup. And they're going to give – I think Rogers probably a guaranteed contract here for probably next three – probably a three- or four-year contract, I think, give an oh. extension for it. The only thing I'll bring up is that I don't know if you heard this, but they did go and offer him to be the highest paid quarterback and he turned it down. They, I think they offered it, but I don't think they talked in terms of, can they trade him? Is there a no trade clause? What's okay, the guaranteed maybe, yeah. money? Because I think they put it out there. They wanted him the highest paid, but what was the guaranteed money? Because yeah, in the NFL, totally you know, yeah. in the NFL, if you're like, they can offer him like, I don't know, like, half a billion dollars but say 50 million guaranteed he's not gonna take that yeah yeah you're right it's like the mahomes deal mahomes is like 500 mil but really uh 167 of it was guaranteed which still seems like incredible <laughs> but, absolutely but let's like when all the nfl players were pissed when uh, mike conley got his deal yeah the, the super yeah. match like 53 million yeah and he's fully like, you know, guaranteed like, fully guaranteed yeah fully guaranteed and stuff yeah it's insane because i when it comes to contracts in the nba uh, I've I talked to a buddy of mine and we'll talk about the Raptors later, but I didn't realize yeah. that, but it is crazy that when these guys get a max deal, it is fully guaranteed. Pretty much. You could come in 50 pounds overweight the next year and just think, 
and they still owe you the whole thing, which good for the player. But if I'm the businessman, I'll be like, you know, I would rather as a player, I would rather have the NBA contract structure, but as, Absolutely. as the organization, the NFL contract st structure makes so much more sense to me. Cause it's like, you got to play your worth, you know? Yeah. So, um, but all right. So if obviously let's pretend Aaron Rodgers is back, you know, all this kind of, you know, goes away, even though I do think his new fiance has a lot to do with it. You know, I think he's just probably tired of, of being in green Bay, the, the, you know, like the town of green Bay, especially now that he's gotten used to the, the I mean, he's a C California guy. You're not going to have any, you're not gonna have any Packer fans on your show anymore. You're, you're crapping on our quarterback and our team on our Listen, town. I, been, I have been to Lambo. I have been to Lambo. Yeah. Um, but so assuming, let's say he's staying, everything's fine. What is your biggest concern football wise going into the season as a Packer fan? Um, our biggest concern is uh, probably cornerback. I know they signed Kevin King back and they're relying on the, on the draft pick, the first rounder to push him for, for playing time. Because honestly, look, Kevin King doesn't give up a touchdown to Mike Evans and doesn't right. give up the touchdown to Patty Miller. It's a different game. We yeah, were probably yeah. playing in the Super Bowl and the Chiefs offensive line was terrible. Yeah, we're probably Super Bowl champions. We're literally like one play away from potentially being a Super Bowl winning team, and that's 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 what hurts the most. Like you know, like you're blown out or you know, whatever, or it's a close game in the end where you, you can win because we were down by eight. Yeah, we could have been you know up by a couple of points at that point. So it just it's frustrating how close we get in the last ten years, and just, we can't seem to get over the hump. Whether it's Seattle, whether it's Arizona. Those were a couple of overtime games. I was like, yeah, I remember the Arizona one. For oh sure. my God. Yeah. So it's just, it's frustrating. But I think the main concern is probably middle linebacker and cornerback. We can get those two positions. Our pass rush is good. Our, everybody keeps talking about, we need more offensive weapons, which I do. We really, he just had MVP year. He had 48 touchdowns. We right. got a, you know, probably top three running back in the NFL. Who's amazing. Like, we don't need, I don't think more help on offense. Funches is coming back this year. It's a second year deal. Or, okay. Or, it's the second year of his two-year deal, so was he hurt last year? Uh, Funch just opted out uh, because oh, of COVID. COVID. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's almost like a free agent signing this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, that is the one thing I was uh, when it comes down to this argument, and I've made this before. I just don't like when people complain about what the Packers have addressed in the off season, and that it's like defense, defense, defense. Because, like, I, I'm sure I've texted you before, but you know they have the the, the offense has never been a problem. As a Viking fan, no. I have never feared uh, the Packer defense, and I have always feared the offense, as long as Aaron Rodgers yeah. has been in there. And so that's one of the things that um, I just don't get that argument because I think, like, if they would have drafted an offensive weapon this past draft, it just wouldn't have made sense to me. I think they did the right move by drafting the corner because oh. that's what they need. But dude, because we – I think we fantasize, like, the – because a lot of the first round draft wide receivers are bust. They're terrible. Yeah. But look at Justin, look at Justin Jefferson. Oh my God. Thank you. Well, yeah. And they're talking about now that we potentially were. Yeah, I uh, saw that. Planning yeah. our, oh, the what ifs, man. Like he was right there. Or like Patrick Queen, they could have traded up. Baltimore got him last year because we needed a linebacker. A linebacker. Yeah. I think I think that was the most thing. Every, all the Packer fans were pissed off last year. I, I can understand from the the GM standpoint. Rodgers didn't have a very good year two years ago. So, like, right. okay, well, we'll get somebody. But we're, we're still in the NFC Championship game. You're right there. So, it's, instead of addressing the first round, a potential person that can help, you grab somebody that's not going to contribute whatsoever at all. So, well, that's, 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 that's the, the thing. Part. I'm not saying that they made the right draft picks because I think a lot of the Packers' picks haven't turned out to be great players. They're not one of the top dra like drafting organizations. I'm just saying the positions that they've drafted – I don't yeah. criticize, you know, now maybe they missed on the guys, but I think that was the right holes to, to plug, I guess. So, um, absolutely. And all right. Did you know this? Cause a lot of people haven't known this. I found this out like over a month ago, but that there's going to be 17 regular season games this year. Oh, I knew that they, oh, they voted on it like a year ago, the ownership meetings. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, so what happens is I just found this out today too, the way they're going to set it up is first place teams are going to play first place teams to make it tougher, obviously. So this is the part where as a Viking fan, I'm glad that they finished third last year. So we'll play a third 
third team in another division. And the AFC is getting home field this year. Because I was always wondering that if they're adding one game, the home and away schedule is going to be flipped, you know, with yeah. number of games. So this year, the AFC gets the home game. So our teams are going to have one less home game than away games. And then next year, we'll flip back. Um, the last football question, what are your thoughts on Justin Fields? Because honestly and truthfully, I'm a little scared. Because I have a lot of Bear fans who have been going off and, you know, all freaking excited about Justin Fields. And I did think yeah. that it was weird why that he was dropping so much. Because earlier in the season, it was Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields. And uh, I'm a little I'm a little shaky over here. I don't know. To, to me, to me, the Bears are the Jets of the NFC, kind of. Where it doesn't matter it feel better. who the prospect, like, you know. Because Jets get like good products. Sam Darnold was like what, the what first or second pick of the draft? He might. I like, think he was the second pick. So ba Baker Baker no. went first. He went second. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. And by you know he had a great career at USC, and by all accounts he should be a successful. And they can't and like nobody. Doesn't matter who goes there, they can't pan out. And that, I think that's the same thing with uh with the Bears. You get there and you just for whatever reason I don't know. They can coach. I don't want to wish. Fence, but offense is ridiculous. No, they can't do anything. I don't so want to make I, bad I, on the kid. No, 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 no. I, I hope. Well, I don't know. I. Yeah, I, I know it's him. hard. <laughs> it's hard. I hope for him to succeed, not against the Packers. Yeah, because no, because I'm like, I hope he's a great backup quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> and but, again, he looks he looks great, but the, this who do they have? Andy Dalton is like the starter right now. Yeah, it'll it has right? to be Fields. Really? Because they're going to have to protect if, – if they just don't start off undefeated or whatever, it has to be field because the GM and the coach have to protect their job. So they could go 7-10, and 10, you know, but if field yeah. shows promise towards the end of the season, they might be able to save their job. So I think that's the key. Um, all right, we'll switch gears. Uh, this we can agree on that we're both Raptor fans. Um, you know, we're both big time you, – you, you grew up in Toronto, right? Yep. So you've yep. been there from the come up. I'm a big Raptor fan. Obviously, we win the title in 2019. Tears of joy, super happy. This year has been, I, to me, it has been a big disappointment. But I also maybe I'm thinking too much about it on court and just basketball wise. What is your take of this season? They just got eliminated from the playoffs, yeah. so for the first time in seven seasons, they're not going there. How do you feel about the season? First, let me. Let me start with, I did grow up in Toronto, and I remember we, before we even had a team, everybody was excited. We got awarded the NBA team, and they played actually in the Sky Dome. Now it's called the Rogers Center, but it was the Sky Dome where the Blue Jays played. This was a big baseball stadium, and they would, like, cover half of it off and then put, like, the basketball court. It was just ridiculous. Like, not a lot of people would come. It was just – because obviously – Obviously, when it first started, a lot of people, but then, like, we started sucking so bad. <laughs> Nobody would come, just, like, this empty, huge, just, like, 140 feet to the ceiling, just feels empty. But yeah, I've seen videos, it so looks bad. like, I've seen videos so, and it looks like the final four, but yes. if it had that final four teams in the whole league, like, the worst teams in the league, and it's, yes. like, an empty and, and, stadium. And empty, yeah, yeah, everything's empty. But then, you know, I uh, got Damon Sotomayor, and then we had... Jason McGrady, uh, Vince Carter. Vince Carter changed everything for Toronto. Yeah. Like we weren't even considered like a serious team. But Vince Carter came, yeah. and he changed like the culture. Toronto was like an actual like real NBA team. We never won a championship with him, but like, he put us like as a legitimate place. And they got the Air Canada Center, uh, which was which is amazing. It's fantastic there. And for them to win the championship, I went to Game One, Canada's first ever Finals game. I was there, performed a game two, dream come true. And then they won the championship. And to me, well, I was after there, they I won, I waited for freaking 25 years, you know, and it was finally just like this, like, I never thought they'd win my lifetime. I was like, I was like, all right, whatever. No, they're never going to win. And you know that quite well being a Vikings fan. Like you, you don't know what Thank it you. feels like to win. Thank you. So you're welcome. But anyway, <laughs> the, <laughs> they finally won. It just felt so good. I don't care if they win another championship. I don't care if nothing ever happens again. We have we have that, and they can't take it away. We set out with no team, 
to uh, 25 years later, we have a championship. It's amazing. So this year is a disappointment, getting back to your question. It sucks, but I'm still- I have still a run the high. Yeah, hold on, hold on one second. I have my shorts on. This is what, I got my championship ring. Hey, there it is. You can't, you can't take that away. <laughs> and this, I don't care what our record is this year. It could be 0 and 72 the short season, but where is it? There it is. But here it is. Can't, can't take that away. I love it. So, but no, it, it definitely sucks this year. But I expected once Kawhi left, you know, we don't have that guy. I thought Siakam was going to step up. And he's like, kind of like, I, he's not taking the next step. I don't know. Lowry's getting older. You know, like, where, so, where do you go? So my, my complaint with this year isn't necessarily that they're not making the play. It is that they're not making the playoffs, but yeah, it's because I don't think I've, I mean, I also haven't watched other teams as closely. I've never had my team tank as obviously, in my opinion, as the Raptors have this season. And that's what's bugged me. Also, maybe this has to do with it. The fact that most of the good players coming out of this draft are guards. And yeah. the Raptors, you just traded for Gary Trent. You have Fred, who's going to be your point guard, I guess, of the next three years. OG Ananobi. So, you know, they have guards. And so, obviously, I think that's what they'll end up drafting because it's going to be best player available if they end up with the sixth or the seventh pick in the draft. But there's been so many games where it's just been like Lowry out rest, uh, Siakam is out for rest or whatever, and it's bothered me as a fan because what I've loved about the Raptors and the thing I fell in love with is we always like fought. Like I mean, the year that changed everything was that year with Demar Derozan, Lowry, and Rudy Gay, and they started off like nine and thirteen, and they traded Rudy Gay. And then the team just took off and made the playoffs and they played Brooklyn in the first round, went to seven games. We hadn't been to the playoffs in so long. And they were just like dogs. Like they were fighting. They were like, it was such a, you know, like it's like the Knicks this year. You know, I root for the Knicks this year because they're playing defense. They don't have that like big superstar and they're just fighting every single game. And this year just has not had that whatsoever. And a lot of, you know, in the beginning of the season, they were hit with COVID. But then I just think like the last month, two months of the season, when they've been able to make a push to get into the play-in or get into the sixth seed, they've blamed it on still COVID and been like, oh, and it's been such a tough season and relocating the Tampa and the COVID stuff. Every team has faced COVID issues, you know? And the Raptors did a lot in the beginning, but that was in the beginning of the season. And then the relocation to Tampa... I bet you half those guys have enjoyed missing out on the winter in Toronto. They're getting paid with no state tax. Yeah. So I bet you that, and I'm guarantee you they've, they've got a relocation bonus to find yeah. a home or apartment in, in Tampa. So it's just felt like the season of excuses to me. And I fell in love with the Raptors always being that team that didn't make excuses. You know, everyone else made them for us. Everyone else was like, No one wants to go play in Toronto and whatever. Masai being like, we're going to bring a championship to Toronto. It wasn't excuses, you know? And this is that first season where I feel like it's just full of excuses. That's what's bothered me. It hasn't been that they, you know, if, hey, if they play bad basketball and they're, you know, competing and trying and it's just not working out, fine. But, you know, for the longest time of the season, they needed a big. It was so evident that they needed a good big man. And, you know, even now that they got Ken Birch, he's been playing great. Yeah. So. And with Ibaka gone, I think Ibaka brought a lot of personality and a lot of, like, calm to the position. Yeah, for sure. Well, like, kind, of, like, kind of Kawhi, you know, with Kawhi, like, he's, like, so, like, relaxed. I think everybody else feels, like, relaxed around yeah. him. And this year, like, with Ibaka left, Kawhi's gone, Mark Gasol. And Mark Gasol, like, he's, it hurts me to watch him. Yeah. Because he's so... He's so slow. Like, and no I think we're slow. like the same age. He's like, what, 30? I'm 36. He's like 36 or whatever. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. He's like walking, like he's got like cement boots on. I'm like, Jesus. But yeah, it's, I think 
it's a combination of like some key players leaving and some players like just feeling like it's like a lost season. So nobody's like, cause you, dude, you saw when we played the Lakers last week and Lowry wanted to prove a point, he came yeah. out that he was freaking Superman, bro. Yeah. Siakam was Superman. Yeah. And they, they put up like 80 the points between the two of them or something crazy like that. Yes. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Cause they, you, they were motivated. Like, Oh, they were potentially going to trade for me. And they skip, they passed on me. Right. I'm going to show them. And that, that's the, I think the only game of the season I watched where they had like passion, like, okay, we're going to do this. And you can see that they can just the two guys alone for the team on their back. Well, that's what I'm saying on, on the road. That's what I'm saying is that they have the talent and they have yeah. possibly one of the top coaches in the league. It's just yeah. been that the organization has allowed for these excuses that it, it it's almost like there's not any weight on the players. So if they lose, it's like, ah, we were expected to lose, you know? So, yes. and that's what I've been bothered with. Like I said, I think this team is so much, I think Fred is legit. When he wants to play defense, he locks down. OG might be a all defense team one day for sure. Lowry is still Lowry, you know, he's older, but the dude can still ball. And that's what bothered me. This is a combination of things. Some players got paid. Yep. So they got they, they got their contract. And then they're they're all going to have to money. bust their ass every single like play. So that they're more comfortable now. They all won a championship a couple years ago. Yeah. So it gives you, you know, yeah, they window. realize. Yeah, they realize they're not going to beat a lot of the top teams. They're not gonna like before when Kawhi came, those or DeRozan and Lowry were together, or when Kawhi came, there was legitimate, you know. Yeah, they had a fighter's chance to, you know, to win. I feel like they feel like they don't have a chance. And if they don't really have a chance, then why bust your ass on every single game? And so then you start making excuses. When you're comfortable and paid and you just want a championship, that's why a lot of teams, like in the NFL, they don't repeat. Yeah. You know, a lot of people get complacent, they get comfortable, some players leave, and then you're like, oh, well, you know, we're not going to win. So we'll give it like 70% of our, instead of right, 90 right, to 100 right that every game so i think that was it was a combination of both i think for fans it's frustrating yeah like to watch but i think they're going to try to rebuild and i don't know who who do you think potentially they sign as like the guy to kind of replace well replace i Kawhi? think i think gary trent they're going to resign no matter what because even if he they have to overpay for him you can't yeah. lose that a- asset so i think they'll keep him and then they can always you as Chris Paul has proven, you can always trade a bad contract. You know, all yeah. the, Russell West, Westbrook had an awful contract. Find a way to trade him, you know? So I think Gary Trent stays. Lowry might be the one that goes. And I think I think he will leave. And I'm okay with it. I think he's done everything he could for, for the city, for the team. And this is a good way, you know, like he, it'd be the off season. He can write a huge thank you piece on the Tribune, whatever. And it's time, you know, Fred will take over as the guard. Uh, Malachi Flynn has showed some promise, you know, the, the rookie, I think he'll become the backup point guard. So you have Gary Trent Jr., OG and Pascal, those, you know, so between Fred, Gary Trent Jr., OG and Pascal, that's four starters already. Um, the, who, but it's still, there's no like, yeah, but, but I think it's they're like, going to, like, Go ahead. I think I was just going to say OG is the one that they're counting on, I I think, becoming that guy. And lately he's been putting up numbers, but I can't buy into OG because he seems so, like, robotic. But so does Kawhi. And Kawhi, you know, ends up becoming Kawhi. So I think OG has that potential. But um, I think they're going to bring in – they'll try to bring in a big man, someone that, you know, can actually semi-dominate in the paint. And, uh, and yeah, and I think they're going to count on whatever draft pick they get to be a swing, a swing guy, because there is no, there is no real big in the draft that you would draft that high, either that, or they'll trade the pick and do some kind of trade with an unhappy superstar. And that maybe changes things around. Yeah. But even like in the NBA as a whole, we got MB who's amazing and you yeah. got Jokic and who else is there really? Like as a big guy, Anthony Davis. Those like the three guys. Like, who else is like a like a dominant big? Well, Everybody you know, if you kind of like the thing is, if you look at uh, p- like potential playoff matchups, the, for example, a team like Milwaukee is might play Miami in the first round. If they get bounced by Miami, changes are coming. You know, because that team has done the same dance for four straight seasons, three straight seasons. Not Giannis, I, not Giannis. 
Okay, okay. Because I, no, I, no, no, I no. don't, I don't like Giannis. I, he's a great player, but I, I don't know. I just don't love him. Oh, I'm, I'm cool with Giannis, but I'm saying Chris Middleton maybe becomes available. You know, okay. um, I think that team's gonna get a shakeup. The Mavs. They got a tough first round if they play the Denver Nuggets because Jokic is on a tear, and I think he should win MVP. So if they're out in the first round, Perzingis, I think, is out. You know, And I'm not saying that th these aren't necessarily guys I want the Raptors to trade for, but I'm just yeah. saying it, a lot comes down with what happens in the playoffs and who gets bounced. You know, a guy that I really would love the Raptors to get would be Sabonis from the Pacers. Okay. Because I think if the Pacers end up, they're already kind of in the playing tournament. If they flake out, either Miles Turner or him, Zabonis has been rumored before anyway. So it's just guys like that that I think give it like a month once the playoffs get going and there will be names out there. And I think the Raptors at least have ammo to trade for those guys. You know, and that's okay. where I think, you know, maybe Lowry is a sign and trade and you get a draft pick in return there and you can use that as well. So There'll, there'll be moves. You know, the Heat are going to have to pay Duncan Robinson, which then makes, you know, Tyler Hero more available because they might not be able to keep Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Duncan Robinson, and then and Tyler Hero. I love Tyler Hero. <laughs> he, he, he looks like he's like a 17-year-old kid. Yeah, he looks so young. Has no business, you know, playing basketball. He is yeah. ridiculous. He's amazing. Well, and the last team I was going to say, I think um, – I mean, there's other teams that'll start, you know, what happens with the Blazers if they get bounced in the first round too, you know, and they, they have to pay Norman Powell, but, you know, maybe at some point they're like, hey, CJ and Dame, maybe we trade CJ to bring in a bigger guy. Who knows? I'm just saying there's a lot of things that will still shake up and a lot of teams that will have to make changes. The Celtics, Jalen Brown's out for the year now. You know, I don't think they're getting past the first round. If they don't get past the first round, you got to think they're going to, trade Marcus Smart or they're going to try to do something. So there are players that will come available, but I just think I want the Raptors to show that fight and that hunger again. And I'll give them the pass this season if they want, but I like, it's gotta be like, Masai is the biggest free agent, by the way, for the Raptors. They need to keep it. I, I agree, but it's still inexcusable to not even make it like to 10th spot where you, you, know, you have a potential. Oh my God. I agree. You know like this I mean? team has so much. That's why I'm saying. And it's been, they've been like, Oh, Malachi Flynn is going to start tonight. And I'm like, the kid hadn't played all season. That's yeah. just so, so obviously a tank, you know, to me or whatever. And, you know, Chris Boucher has been banged up here towards the end, but he showed promise too, but it's just seemed like it's been auditions in Tampa, you know? And, you yeah. know, so we'll see what happens, but, um anyway last question I'll, I'll just ask you more broad nba thing what is the more most excited thing you're looking for with the playoffs around the corner because for me it's definitely the playing tournament i'm looking forward to hopefully the warriors and the lakers i want to see dude, steph just i was just i was just gonna say because steph dude he's ridiculous ridiculous and he came off the injury and he was playing kind of you know i'm like because i remember stephanie won back-to-back -back mvps he was like insane like yeah and I was wondering if he was going to get back to that, like, where he's just scoring. Like, like every shot, no matter where he takes it, like, it seems like it's just automatic almost. It's like, yeah. it's crazy. And he's back to that, which is insane to me. And for that, like, the plan to be, like, in, like, a 7, 8, or, like, 8, 9, whatever it is, that's amazing. Because those are, like, the, usually the top two teams out west. And then yeah. now, you know, they're going to be playing for, like, a potential – oh, dude, that, that's going to be crazy. Um, and LeBron is he coming back with a high ankle sprain? I, I, they just the thing, LeBron has he added, skip, 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 come on, skip. He's like, he's like, no, he just he's just faking it because he, you know, he was he sprained the ankle, then he played for another couple minutes to get the ten points. Yeah, and no, that he, I saw that. What was that? You know, he's fine. That's what I said. But he like he jogged around inside, and yeah, then he was he's out fine. for like, the six. No. I think they're resting him. Listen, I'm saying yeah. this right now. As a realist, but also borderline LeBron hater over here, he is adding fuel to the fire. Because when he's like, oh, I may not be 100%, already he's putting that excuse in there, and you know it. That if they get bounced yeah. in round one or two, he's going to be like, well, it was a tough season. My ankle injury really set me back. So he's already, it's like a sore loser. You're already putting in like stuff in there just to like, 
in case it goes bad, you can it's blame it on that. Yeah. 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 And then if he wins, you know, it's going to be like people, the LeBron lovers are going to be like, and he had this ankle injury. What a warrior and blah, blah, blah. So yeah. I already hate that part of it Two, I mean, I love Luca and the, and the Mavs, but they did the same thing when they went the seventh seed. Now they started criticizing the play in tournament. I know. Yeah. Criticize it when you're the two seed, if you want. But you can't criticize it now that you're in it. So already like, I'm, huh? No, I like the play-in tournament because it gives the the top six teams like incentive to get into the top six. So you yeah. don't want that extra game. Like, no, no, no. I, I also like it. And also because a team like the Raptors who are the 11th seed or 12th or the Bulls that are the 11th seed, it kind of gives you an incentive not to tank because you're like, oh, so, you know, if you were the 11th seed in the past and you're like, we're not going to get to yeah. eight, you might start tanking. Now, if you might get to 10, you might not. But, I mean, obviously the Raptors have shown that they don't care. But I'm just saying, yeah. But I do like the playing tournament. I'm just saying now I'm like, because LeBron criticized it and was like, whoever made the playing tournament should be fired. Be fired. I'm like, they should get a raise. You're going to play in the playing tournament against Steph, and it's going to be awesome. So I, I yeah. like it too. So, but, um, yeah, man, I don't know. The LeBron thing, it's just he – He's not doing himself favors. And when he was injured, like you said, he came back yeah. in and they shoots the three, runs back, and then he's out for a month what? and a half. No, what I think happened, he had a, he had a, whatchamacallit, the MVP run, because he was like the forerunner before he, yeah. he went out, because MVP got hurt, all this stuff. So he's like the number one front runner for MVP. I think once he got hurt, he's probably going to miss like a week or maybe two, three weeks. Yeah. And by then it was like going to be impossible to come back to the MVP. He, I think, thought. And yeah. he's like, well, you know, like, what else am I really fighting for? AD's out. Right. Right. He milked, he milked he's gonna it. Coast, he's yeah. going to coast a little bit and then get completely healthy and get energy. Because look what happened in the bubble. Because they had the, what was it, like two months off before they went to the bubble. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people credit. You know, he was playing the whole year and he got two months rest. And then he was like, like a freaking train in the bubble. It was like a freaking unstoppable. Yeah. I think that's where they're doing the exact same thing. He's going to come back, potentially play two out of four games now, kind yep. of get back into the, the swing of things and go from there. But yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think he's taking it easy for sure. No, I agree. I think he milked that injury. I'm not saying he didn't get injured. I think he got hurt. Like you said, I think it was like a week or two. And he was like, let's just keep saying I'm injured and I'll take a three week break here so I can refresh my body. Agreed. Cause if they're healthy, even if they're in the playing tournament, I have no doubt in my mind that they're going to be in the Western Conference Finals if they're healthy. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Um, well, all right, Simon, this will wrap it up. We, we've talked a good amount, but uh, I appreciate you jumping on. I don't appreciate the jersey, but I'll let you wear it while you still can. I wore my special signature jersey. Look at this. Do you see the signatures? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Straight, straight from Lambeau Field wow. a couple years ago. Yeah, you know, not watched for your podcast. <laughs> I, 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 I worn it like once since I got a sign because I got a signature there, so I'm keeping it like fresh. The way Aaron Rodgers and stuff. So you were close enough to where he signed it, or you bought a signed jersey? No, no, no. We went to uh, uh, the training camp, and a local told us where the Packers leave the facilities. So we went to the back for them to leave. I got this is like probably five, six years ago. I got A.G. Hawk. I got Ted Thompson. You're like, this is actually Kevin King's signature. <laughs> no, no, no. I got actually Corey Lindsay signed it. Okay. He's our center. center. At A.G. Hawk. But he's not your center anymore, Thompson. right? He just left. He had to say yeah, uh, the Chargers. Chargers. Yeah. But Rogers, he, cause he was coming out in his SUV and Lyric, my wife, she jumped out in front of the SUV. He like slammed the brakes. He was like, <laughs> get out of the way. She's like, Rogers. She's like hitting the hood. <laughs> He's like, to tell you to get the hell out of there. So he almost ran her over, which I wasn't even mad. I was like, yeah, that show's going over Rogers. It's awesome. So, no, that was cool. But uh, I, I forgot what we're talking about. The sign <laughs> so said, just at Lambo with the signed yes. jersey. Yes. So we're at Lambo. We got a jersey sign and everything. And I got a whole bunch of my, I got my helmet. I don't know if you can see my son. Where is yeah. He? he was taking a deuce right there, right? In that photo. He's in the helmet. He's like yeah. eight days yeah. old. We put him in the helmet. So. Yeah, he was like, this is gross. No. Come on. <laughs> oh, man. Christian, before we leave, just one quick question for you. Let's hear it. How do you feel with the Vikings have never won a Super Bowl? How does it make you feel? 
Well, the fact that every Super Bowl that they've made, I didn't watch because I was too young. I think they've made four Super Bowls and lost all of them. Yes, all in four. I love it. So, um, I feel like a fan of the Raptors before, but in a way, I got to skip out on the heartbreak, I guess, because I, like I said, the biggest heartbreak I have was a missed wild card kick by Blair Walsh, which I was with you guys when we were stuck in Rochester, New York. And it was like, we were snowed in and I was like, but I was watching it by myself. I remember I like got on the floor before the field goal in the hotel room and he shanked the 27 yard field goal. Heartbreak. (laughs) That was a heartbreak. And uh, the other heartbreak was when the Eagles just macked the crap out of us after that Saints game. And, you know, so I'm just going to mention the Saints and Vikings with Brett Favre. Yeah, that too. Actually, yes, yes, for sure. Sorry, I don't know how I forgot that one. But see, I was just younger back then. But oh. that one, same thing. Yeah, because I remember they beat the Cowboys. Sidney Rice had like three touchdowns the week before. And then Favre has that like horrible throw. And But I think back at that time, um, I don't know why. Maybe it's weird to say, but I didn't have almost as, as much, and stupidly so, because they were a better team then. But I didn't have as much confidence as I do now. Because I don't think I understood football as well. So now, you know, everyone wants to talk crap about Kirk Cousins. Fair enough. But I think once the offensive line is fixed, he's going to, his numbers will be better. And he already has good numbers. So, um, you know, last year I just knew the defense was going to stink. And uh, they were starting two rookie cornerbacks. So what do you expect? Uh, Week one, Rodgers shattered them, you know. And, um, but this year I do think that they're fixing the defense. They brought in Patrick Peterson to help with the young guys. And I think they've drafted great. The offensive line is going to be better. So this year, I quietly do think that they're going to be contending with the pack for the first seed in the NFC North. And I do have high expectations this year. So we will see. We will reconvene. But, um, yeah, I wasn't around for the, for the Super Bowl losses, so that makes it easier for me as a Vikings fan. And when I they do win that. the championship, it'll be – for me, it'll be like when the Raptors won the championship, I'm sure. No, no. I love all my friends who have teams that are like super amazing and everybody's confidence levels like, ah, oh, do this and that. And here we go. And then hey, it's like six and 10. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I've always it. been real with you though. Last year, I even told you from the start, this defense is going to stink. So they had linemen that like sat out the season injuries, like, and yeah. the injuries that happen. So the injuries is not an excuse. You know that? I mean, that happens during the season to every team, but Michael Pierce was their big free agency signing last year, a defensive tackle. And he, you know, opted out, uh, ever, yeah. um, not Everson Griffin. Well, they lost Everson Griffin before last year. And then Danielle Hunter was hurt the whole season. So, um, and then during the season, they had injuries like to Anthony Barr and Eric Hendricks. But that, like I said, during season injuries, those happen to everyone. So this year will be different, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> and then we have Kellen Mond back there for all the, uh, really unrealistic Viking fans to start making him Patrick Mahomes in their minds. Yep. So I'm like, hey, as long as he's a good backup, that's all I want from him. If he ends up being great, wonderful. But I'm good yeah, for like now. I always say, the only thing better than a Packers win is a Vikings loss. I well, we that. say the same thing, but backwards. <laughs> 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 all right, Simon. Thanks for uh, hopping on for joining me, man. No, uh, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And good luck with your show i love it i watch it all the time i enjoy it and uh real quick where can people find you guys on social media what do you want them what do you want to plug uh i don't know go follow the baby mooch and baby mooch (laughs) Mooch our our travels and we're performing all that stuff so go follow him and my wife and our company we're at circus uh incredible it's also on facebook instagram so come check us out there okay awesome well thanks for your time man Go Vikes. <laughs> no problem, dude. Go Packers. All right. Well, a huge thank you to Simon and, of course, to the little Mooch who took some time out to talk to us today and answer some some tough questions. So uh, thank you to both of them for joining me on the show. Remember, guys, if you enjoyed it, if you could, please share and tell people to su- subscribe so we can keep growing the channel. I've been loving doing this and having different people on to chat with, so hopefully you guys have been as well. And I'll try to come back with another episode later this week. Thanks again for joining me.